Hello everyone. The topic that is given to me today is insolvency resolution process cost. The purpose of insolvency resolution cost, we have to understand that what is this cost and how the cost is to be incurred. Under IBC, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, uh, most of the bankers or financial creditors are coming out to file a petition for insolvency proceedings. Practically what happens, many of the creditors fear that how much cost they have to bear while continuing with the insolvency resolution process. So this is a very important question that how or when, in what way the cost is to be incurred. In many cases, the cost is not proportionate to the case. So we will deal with all these factors that uh, what does it mean by the insolvency resolution cost. Basically, <clears throat> as an insolvency professional, once we are appointed, we undertake a lot of things in mind that a company which is in insolvency proceedings has a lot of things has particularly uh, after initiation as IRP, after appointment of IRP, his own fees, appointment of various professionals to run the company during insolvency process is very very difficult task. So IBBI has come out with a, uh, a circular as well as they have already provided in the provisions of the code that how much and in what way the cost should be charged. But while handling the case uh, there is a conflict uh, between committee of creators as well as uh, uh, with the, all the stakeholders uh, when IRP is trying to justify he has to put up papers that this is the information which contains that this is what we have incurred and whether this cost is justifiable or not. Let me just give you an example if a company which undergoes insolvency and it doesn't have any operations it is not having any uh, uh, asset now all the creditors who are waiting for something that at least something should be realized the corporate uh, insolvency process should either revive or they should get some benefit out of it practically what happens when company doesn't have any asset any running operations creditors also feel that how to bear this cost this is another question that comes before insolvency professional. They have to run the process and bear a lot of expenses which form part of CIRP cost. So such type of litigations used to come before honorable NCLT as well as this is looked into by the insolvency and bankruptcy board of India and we will proceed uh, that what are the provisions contained in the code. This section 5 subsection 13 clearly mentions that the amount of interim finance. Now let me just tell you about that what is the interim finance means. That when company is in the hands of insolvency professional, he has uh, to, because company is under stress. When company goes into insolvency, it is under stress. So what they need? They need funds. Funds for running the company. So such type of interim finance which is required has to be arranged by insolvency professional or by the committee of creditors or by mutual understanding that how the funds can be arranged. So this is the first part of uh, interim finance and cost incurred in raising the interim finance. All cost connected to interim finance becomes a uh, part of corporate insolvency resolution cost basically it is the cost which is incurred during the process no any expense incurred to run the process smoothly is cost of insolvency proceedings so such cost is to be borne by initially who will bear the cost that committee of creator has to bear that cost if it goes beyond committee of creators that suppose a Initially, in so, uh, this interim resolution professional uh, will get the, this cost from the applicant. 
who is filing this petition in the in NCLT. After that, when once the petition is filed, this cost is to be borne by the committee of creditors. After when the committee of creditors is formed, but committee of creditors will also charge this cost from the corporate debtor. So such type of process is laid down that any insolvency proceeding which goes that the cost will be borne by the corporate debtor. Let me just come to the next point in section section 550 uh, 5 subsection 13 uh, interim finance the fees payable to the person acting as a resolution professional. Whatever fees normally resolution professional uh, when appointed he needs uh, fees for running the process. He is the only person who is becoming CEO of the company. The board of directors are terminated. The board is terminated. Now uh, all the powers are vested with insolvency professional. Practically, when suppose a company which comes to the hands of the insolvency professional which does not have any asset, any source of money uh, and he is devoting his time, he should be compensated. Who will compensate him? That is, committee of creditors has to uh, facilitate uh, payment and remuneration to insolvency professional. All costs incurred at a, uh, by the resolution professional in running the business of the corporate debtor as a going concern. Means you have to run the company as a going concern. You cannot hamper because the risk of running a company is very very important a company which is run in profit unfortunately enters into insolvency uh, process now if you as an insolvency professional you the board of director by virtue of law is suspended insolvency professional comes as a chief executive of the company ceo of the company if suppose production stops operations stop and that cause a loss to the company. Who will bear this loss? So insolvency professional has to be very careful. He has to run the operations of the company to keep the company as a going concern. As it was earlier, it should go as it is now during the insolvency resolution process. Any cost incurred at the expense of the government to facilitate insolvency resolution process if government is bearing any cost, that cost is also required to be uh, uh, forming part of insolvency resolution process cost. Any other cost as may be specified by the board of uh, uh, board, insolvency and bankruptcy board of India. So if something is ambiguous, some costs are supposed to be uh, specified by the board by notifying and that will form part of insolvency resolution uh, process cost. Section 208, subsection 2 of the code is very, very relevant while talking about this particular uh, cost aspects. Every insolvency professional shall abide by the code of conduct. The code of conduct has been prescribed by under the law that he has to abide, maintain excellence and work to the best of his efforts and he should be uh, um, under code of conduct he has to be very careful while handling the process because things are very very sensitive in nature and if he is not to that extent uh, satisfying the need of the process uh, any risk may come on his uh, head so basically to comply with the requirements of the terms and conditions specified in the bylaws of the insolvency professional agency of which he is a member he has to comply with all the requirements to allow the insolvency professional agency to inspect the records. At any point of time, insolvency professional agency, basically it is an agency IPAs. IPAs are facilitated as a facilitator to insolvency and bankruptcy board, which is regulator of the insolvency professional as well as insolvency professional agencies. So he has to allow Whatever records he has at any point of time, any IPA can come and inspect the 
documents. So it is his duty under code of conduct that he has to allow insolvency professional agency that whatever records he has for uh, any clarification or any confusion, he should provide those records to the agency. To submit a copy of all records uh, of every proceeding before the adjudicating authority to the board as well as to the insolvency professional agency of which he is a member. So, insolvency professional has to be very careful to see that Whatever proceedings are going on in NCLT, NCLT, NCLT or wherever related to proceedings, insolvency resolution process, he has to keep all those information and any point of time, uh, insolvency and bankruptcy board or IPA, anyone can ask for information that please provide this information so that they can facilitate uh, the stakeholders, they can also provide information to various agencies if required. So he he is he should be ready that all the time he must provide such information to the board uh, regarding proceedings of the case to perform his function in such a manner and subject to such conditions as may be prescribed. So the law it emerged in 2016. It is a very young law. So the process which has been already prescribed in insolvency and bankruptcy code for running the insolvency process it is new so uh, regulations uh, are already formed many regulations are coming out new circulars clarification orders etc are coming so dynamic law changing as per the decisions in various courts courts means nclt nclat uh, and also even the matters are reaching to high courts and supreme courts so ibbi is uh, closely watching all those proceedings that what is happening and what else is required, they accordingly present that some sort of clarification order, some sort of circulars or uh, any, um, uh, you know, um, um, amendment is required. They take care of that amendment and accordingly the amendments are made through parliament. Mm -hmm. This insolvency professionals regulation, IBBI uh, regulation, Regulation 16 talks, an insolvency professional must ensure that he maintains written uh, records for any decision taken. What is the purpose of this regulation? The purpose is very clear. If you are not keeping proper records and proceedings have been done, you have already proceeded with the insolvency process. Let me tell you there are different stages of insolvency process. As IRP, you have to conduct, uh, you have to invite claims, public announcement, you have to uh, create a committee of creditors, file constitution of committee of creditors to NCLT, uh, then you have to conduct COC, COC meeting agenda and minutes as per the law must be done by the uh, professional. So all these records of the proceedings which he is doing as an extended arm of the court and CLT. He is supposed to work as an officer of the court. All proceedings he has to take care and these proceedings records must be kept by him in detail and properly written documented documents and these documents which why the what is the purpose of these documents? These documents become an evidence under the court. So either at NCLT can be presented at any point of time for taking any decision by the court or the same can be referred by insolvency and bankruptcy uh, board of India and IPS for reviewing any information or for uh, looking into the uh, whether the code has been uh, followed, the law has been followed or not or wherever there is any uh, confusion or any kind of you know issue which has been uh, coming before them, they can take care of uh, that issue. And these records will help the person to inspect and uh, form an opinion. The purpose is to form an opinion. So records must be kept by the, him. Regulation 25 talks about uh, provide service 
for remuneration which he has charged in a transparent manner is a reasonable reflection of the work necessary and properly undertaken and is not inconsistent with the applicable regulations what is the motive of this regulation 25 that whatever cost he is charging should be charged in a uh, transparent manner it should not be like you can charge informally you cannot charge informally you have to uh, charge all the cost through coc you must present the information before coc committee of creditors that this is the cost this is the fees this is the professionals service providers this is the goods that is purchased so all those things whatever cost you are incurring must be handled in a transparent manner and should always be presented to the stakeholders and during insolvency proceedings stakeholders is a committee of creditors so wherever approvals are required all the costs uh, must be ratified by the committee of creditors what is the meaning of ratification if suppose i have incurred some cost now i am going to committee of creditor committee of creditor says no this is not the amount we will pay you you we were supposed to pay you only few thousands not this much of amount so there is a disagreement to the extent that is ratified by the committee of creditors approved by the committee of creditors is normally approval is required in certain cases ratification is required where the cost has already been incurred by the insolvency professional either as irp or rp during the process he can get it ratified if coc is not ratifying or is not approving any cost then the cost burden comes on the shoulder of the insolvency professional very tough situation as a practice practicing professional i have experienced in many cases that this kind of issues are always arising committee of creditor says in many cases if it is not a uh, a big organization it is a small organization funding nbfcs etc they say how much you can recover from this process can we get the money back if we get the money back then only we will pay you so such type of difficult situations that uh, for any company which is under insolvency resolution process uh, no bank no other uh, funding is available because it is normally they are treating it as a, as a negative list company it is under stress so how the money will come back but i am telling you for motivating this factor this insolvency funding interim finance has been taken as a cirp cost that in case of any funding which is arranged has first priority to be paid back to the uh, that party before you pay any other creditor so such type of motivational you know thought process has been uh, built in uh, the process and law is having uh, those provisions so interim finance if you can arrange as an irp or rp that is fine but uh, in certain cases if it is not available it cannot be arranged regulation 25a talks about the uh, disclosure of fees basically disclosure is required once you are charging any fee whatever fee you have charged the process is over you are handing over the things you must disclose all fees charged by insolvency professional either as irp rp liquidator as well as any other fee which you have charged based on certain suggestive guidelines under a circular there are there are indicative uh, issues that uh, this much of can be charged this this way it can be charged time based can be charged under certain circumstances over time is used because over time means suppose there is an urgency in the case you have to move to mumbai from delhi you have to stay back there for 5 days or 10 days your other works are hampering now for those 5 days day and night work rp can propose that i have worked too much my team was staying there my cost has increased so time cost will also be more so this way the time based cost and in many other ways the cost fixed cost per month basis and variable cost maybe on time basis so 
different type of proportions are there but all these cost of irp as well as other parties who are involved in the process like service providers rirp is appointing valuers rp is appointing valuers you are appointing forensic auditors you are appointing any investigation agency you are appointing a security agency you are appointing so many agencies in the process so all these will form as part of cirp cost but you we must keep it in mind that all these uh, things whatever cost we have incurred must be very uh, approved by the committee of creditors so these disputes used to go to nclt we have seen even in few of my cases i have experienced that coc is not ready to pay how to run the process very difficult situation coc says that no recovery would be possible so we are not ready to pay you anything uh, we'll talk about those examples also uh, then regulation 26 uh, it is a kind of misconduct issue that uh, the code of conduct has also uh, brought in the process in the regulation that insolvency professional shall not accept any fee or charges other than those which are disclosed means he cannot charge any other fees other than whatever he is disclosing he has to disclose with the ips insolvency professional agency where he is registered as well as he has to file a disclosure to ibbi also in case if it is required there are certain forms regulation 27 uh, which is also a part of uh, code of conduct an insolvency professional shall disclose all the cost towards insolvency resolution process cost liquidation cost or cost of bankruptcy process as applicable to all relevant stakeholders see not only you are disclosing to ips and ibbi as your regulators but you are also disclosing all cost to the uh, stakeholders who are the stakeholders committee of creditor is the approving agency so you have to always approach committee of creditor for getting approval of all the expenses you must uh, all expenses should be approved and ratified so wherever approval is required you get it approved wherever ratification is required that can be ratified so uh, many times coc uh, i have observed that coc doesn't take any decision on this uh, cost part no we will not approve anything now so how to run the process so these conflicts um, are many times uh, visible in the process uh, must be taken care of this insolvency resolution process cost shall not include what it shall not include any fee or other expenses not directly related to cirp normally you are running as an insolvency professional the entire process of cirp of a corporate debtor a company you incur some cost somewhere else and you charge it to the corporate debtor as a insolvency resolution process cost no that cost cannot be charged cost not related to cirp will not form part of this cost so many times irrelevant expenses should be uh, mm, segregated and should not be charged to the process who will do that irp must take his own steps to review that whatever actual cost is incurred related to cirp should be charged any fee or other expenses beyond the amount approved by coc if coc has not approved and approval is required there are provisions that wherever approval of coc is required you must take prior approval particularly i can say interim finance raising of interim finance you must take coc approval if i am going to take money from outside that you give me money for running the process i will pay you interest 18% now i cannot do that i have to put up this matter a proposal that we are raising interim finance at the rate of 18% to the extent of this much of amount are you ready so many times coc says you are bringing money at 18% we are giving loans at 11% why you are hiring uh, why you are taking money from outside at such a cost no we will not allow so for wherever approval is required rp irp or rp has to take prior approval otherwise he can do wherever he has to incur any cost he must proceed where 
he has to keep the company as a going concern corporate debtor as a going concern the question is that you cannot uh, run the process uh, just by keeping the de uh, corporate debtor into uh, a kind of situation that it incurs losses or it gets any abnormal loss during the process all any fee or other expenses incurred before the commencement of CIRP or incurred after the completion of CIRP means before commencement of CIRP, after completion of CIRP, this is not part of CIRP cost. All other expenses are related to creditors, claimant, resolution applicant means all stakeholders are before you. Somebody says there are decisions of NCLT also in many cases. Uh, in many cases where we have seen that uh, such decisions are there where uh, the expenses are not allowed <clears throat> uh, which were incurred in one of the case of bush and power i could have seen that committee of creditor has hired uh, one big law, law firm and incurred around 14 crore rupees cost uh, the matter was brought into the notice of ibbi and uh, that cost the order was passed to return that money because any expenses incurred by any of the committee of creators, member of the committee of creator, any other member or say any stakeholder, promoters. So those will not form part of CIRP cost. So RP should be uh, careful in handling those situations. That somebody who is a stakeholder is asking you to charge this money to the CIRP cost. No, you cannot charge. You should not charge it. So these are certain items of COC etc related. Then uh, regulation 31 is uh, talking about these costs, um, um, the amount of dues, various dues under um, various regulations. Regulation 32, regulation uh, this uh, section 141 subsection D. Uh, this is the cost which is related to, I'll give you an example, like say if I rent out a building. And that company goes into insolvency. My rent is stopped because of no funds. And now I am saying that you vacate my building. But RP or IRP is not vacating the building. Now I am eligible for getting due to moratorium my rights are affected. So this will also form as part of CIRP cost. Expenses incurred on or uh, by the resolu interim resolution professional to the extent uh, ratified under regulation 33. Expenses, like there are certain expenses. So this I think I have already explained you. Uh, I can give you a few examples of, of uh, disclosure filing etc. Then there are few cases. Workmen and employees who were asking that their wages and salary during the insolvency process must be a part of insolvency resolution process cost. The decision is in ABG Shipyard Limited. Wages salaries of only those workmen who actually work during the CIRP process. And uh, another, exa uh, another case uh, was there, Smarty Biltech Systems Private Limited versus Santosh Babu. COC is to pay the fee uh, and cost incurred by IRP, uh, who also acted during the resolution process beyond 30 days till the date of liquidation. Uh, there is also one of my case where I was uh, appointed as IRP or RP, uh, Reliance Commercial Finance Limited versus Noble Resourcing. It was a very strict order of NCLT that if the respondents fails to contribute CIRP cost as approved by COC, then their claim in the CIRP process shall be, would not be considered. It means, thank you very much with all this. Uh, thank you very much.